Prince Harry's meeting with King Charles only lasted 12 minutes, according to Lady Colin Campbell, who is, by the way, a lady. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Even My though her Lord. name's Colin. Colin, I know, yeah. No, I, 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 so I did read this, that um, she said that it's only 12 minutes, because it seems to be, like, a lot of contradictory reports that sometimes some people have said it's 45 minutes, some people say it's just half an hour. But what's quite interesting is, why did he come? Now, a lot of people are saying, obviously, it's because his father's quite unwell and all the rest of it. I don't really think it's that. I think it's two things. One, I think it's to remind the world that he's a royal. Yeah. Right. And the second, I think it's because if he didn't come, I think he would be in a lot more tr PR trouble than he's probably already in. Well, it's quite it's... clear, isn't it, you know, that he didn't have much time for his spare. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I thought one thing I didn't particularly like was he didn't bring the grandkids. For, for King Charles, Wait. I thought... Yeah, because that's because she sat there going... <laughs> <laughs> but no, oh, I... I, 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 I get actually... them in the country. I yeah. really do. I think there's a genuine fear from Meghan of letting those, those kids out of her sight. She doesn't want to yeah. come back in because she has some sort of fear that the British establishment will keep them here. Yeah. I really I, I, believe I, I, that. I, I completely agree with you there, Lois, but I, I really don't like it when people use grandkids um, against grandparents. Yeah, but I think yeah, but it's, it, it's, it isn't a problem in Britain because my understanding is that any heirs to the throne... Um, the monarch can just keep them wherever yeah, he wants. Well, that's right. So, yeah. so, in, so in any yeah. custody battle, Charles yeah. can go, when thinks he should stay here. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but that's I, exactly my point, yeah. to, to agree in fact I, I, I completely yeah. agree. But it's not, it's not a legitimate concern, is it, Derek? And the reality is, Meghan Markle, I think, is a busted flush, mm. and she is determined to try and stay relevant. The only subject upon which I never comment <laughs> is this one. <laughs> oh. but, but we love talking it's, about uh, it, Eric, so you've got to talk about this it. This very subject... Well, I don't know why we booked him. <laughs> I don't know why we booked Sorry him. Sorry about that. Of the royal family. I mean, you know, I know some of them. Oh, God. Oh, there oh, we go. go. So, so, Don't so, you know? So when, so when you say when you say you never comment on I used on to Harry... ride with quite a few of them. Oh, I see. Oh God, I see. I, I never I... comment. Of course, of course. Family. The point is that the reason you're not willing to comment is because he's well into fox hunting. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's, can I just say, go back to the Lady Colin Campbell thing? Uh, she's written the best book I've yeah. ever read about the royal family, specifically about Meghan and yeah. Harry. And I literally devoured the book in almost one sitting. And she talks about the fact. Not a lot of people know this. this is it's completely true, mm. not a conspiracy theory, that when they moved away, who paid their bill uh, initially for the rental of their place? The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yes, I, I Very, that. very, very yeah. interesting, but I the, thought. The one thing that I, that's really struck me, actually, was Prince William. I, I you know, the, I think that relationship between the two brothers, I think, I don't think there's any repair for it now. I no, mean, but, I watched but Prince... Pete, but, Pete, you, you're, you're a, a PR man yeah. in, in your normal yeah. life. Um, what would be your advice if Prince William was your client on the basis that he knows or fears that he might be tape recorded, any conversation he has <laughs> might be misrepresented, and also, if he says anything about Meghan, it will be presented as him being a vile racist. Yeah. My advice, and I wasn't as senior a PR man as you are, when I, when I worked in that business, my advice was avoid, yeah. avoid, avoid. Oh, 100%. A hundred percent. I, I have to admit, William has done the right thing from that perspective, but one thing that they could have done is use this situation as a kind of family coming back together, you know, you could spin this Make rather well if you really it. wanted Make to. But I do agree it. with you. By the way, by the way, Derek, Derek says he never comments, but you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wants to comment. And I've yeah. got something to say that is actually pretty relevant because it's amazing, actually, how quickly things can change or comparatively... Yes. Quickly, things can change. Because, I mean, the, the last story I, I actually read on uh, uh, that made an impression on me on about the royal family was that um, they're, that they're now determined to bring Fergie back back yeah. into the fold. Oh, she's you got know. good PR now. I, I yeah. mean, I mean, yeah. it's extraordinary, you know, how things actually can change. You know why? And because she's been dignified. And it, well, no, the, the very same thing may happen to. Um, well, it, it, I, I've got to be honest with you. I've I've uh, I had a difficult situation with my older brother when we both both worked in the House of Commons at the same time. There's oh, really? a degree of pressure uh, to that situation. I think other people would understand it. You know, look, a pint between two brothers will be will yeah. be helpful on any on any occasion like that, wouldn't it? So. Oh, a hundred percent. There's one photo of them sat in a pub together having a pint, and it could have changed the entire narrative. And I actually, I think, if Harry was smarter or he hired smarter PR people, that's something he probably should have looked. If, but I do think William would have just said no because of the things that you've just said yeah. about the fact that. William just simply can't trust Harry anymore. No, and also the fact, let's be brutally honest, he attacked his wife. 
He basically called his wife an out and out racist. Yes, he did. And there, I don't think there is any coming back from right, that. By the way, by the way, if Harry was cleverer and more academic, let me tell him <laughs> that there's a cleaning job going here. <laughs> uh, we're, looking, we're looking for people with some qualifications. Can I, can I just make a point, actually, though, that I, and I just, it's awful to have to say this, but I feel that one of the reasons that William and Harry have been kept separate and everything is because I think William is being prepared to take the throne yeah. sooner than maybe we'd all like. I completely agree. And 100%. it's a horrible thing to have to well, say. Yeah, well, I don't think it's a horrible thing to have to say because obviously there well. was the cancer diagnosis, but at the same time, Charles is not a young man no. in, 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 any in any case. Yeah. And, and I, I've always thought that William will always do the public facing things because Charles actually. Uh, having having known he a little bit like about Charles, well. Charles yeah. is Charles is somebody who really enjoys actually the job of being monarch, really enjoys the backroom stuff, really enjoys the papers, really enjoys the uh, looking at the bills, <laughs> but but it's less good in public, I think. Yeah. <laughs> There's some doubt too, I think, um, that uh, Prince William is. Um, oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I thought you didn't want to comment. There it is. There it is. I know. Anyway, I know. Okay. On this okay, let's let's get the answer. Uh, Pete, has Prince Harry been accused of only spending 12 minutes with his father when he came to the UK? Is it true or is it false? It's 100 percent true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> hey. Okay, so the next question is to Derek. The UK population will reach 74 million in the next 10 years with net migration at around 6 million people. Wow. Is it true or is it false? I don't know why you're actually asking the question as though it's a problem. You know, <laughs> there's always been population growth. Every single one of us around this table have contributed to it. You know, and uh, by the end of the... Yeah, but, Derek, but, Derek, not all of us came on the boat. <laughs> ah! Oh, Are you hang on a second. It's Vladimir Putin. <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir's calling to talk about the multipolar nature of the Russian development of the Russian state. That's interesting, Vladimir. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's still going. <laughs> <laughs> so, Derek, Derek, you wrote a book about immigration, didn't you? Yes, I wrote a book called uh, The Problem with Immigrants. Uh, but you just which... said there is no problem well, with it. Well, well, she, <laughs> no, the title wasn't written by me. I mean, blame the publishers. I mean, they read the book, which is, of course, what you should be doing. I, and, no, well, and, give me a copy and, and, and I'll and, read and it. Then, and then people, oh, no, you must buy a copy. <laughs> uh, uh, and then everybody will be informed on this uh, very topical subject because there's so much misinformation. But broadly speaking, I mean, I think that it is, it, it, it is true. But what isn't necessarily true is that the net migration figure will be 6 million. There are too many variables uh, to what, make what that about, what about when uh, we, uh, we talk about two things, don't we? Uh, one, in terms of our culture and our society changing as a result of immigration. But number two, literally the, uh, the overload of public services. I have to say, yeah. I'm genu genuinely worried about both of those. Look, I mean, let's, let, let, let's, let's just deal with some facts. I mean, if you look at the league table of countries around the world that take in most immigrants, Britain is fifth. Yeah, but we've got a completely free healthcare service. It's completely different. If we go up to 74 million, well, we'll uh, end up with a situation I've got, I've, got to, I've got to be honest with you, Derek. I'm with Lois. I think you can yeah, either you have this level of you immigration... You can't be with Lois uh, or against her until you've actually heard my point. Uh, oh. uh, so, 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 so just listen and learn. <laughs> now then, uh, there are about 25 countries around the world yeah. that are taking in a, a huge number of uh, immigrants at the moment. We're fifth from the bottom. Um, at the at the top uh, at the top end, you've got places like Pakistan, Iran. They're uh, not uh, that well known uh, for their uh, free healthcare. Bangladesh, though, are they? social um, services. So, no, but uh, that's, 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 that's the point. point. That's the point. No, I, I'm disagreeing with you, Derek. Because but, but hang on a second. Hang on a second. <laughs> Can I just ask you, Pete? Yeah. Isn't look. My view is the following. I don't actually have a problem with uncontrolled numbers of people coming to the country, but you have to abolish the NHS. Yeah. You have to abolish social security, and you have to say that you can come to the country to work, but you're entitled to nothing yeah. well, beyond that. I think you can no, either just have... One second, just, uh, just one second. I, oh, no, you are 100% right. You can either have open immigration or you can have the welfare state. You yeah. can yes, Vladimir. Them. Yes, that's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing that concerns me more is this is a revised up estimate of nearly 10% yeah. in a very short amount of time. The, one of the main issues with immigration isn't necessarily the numbers of 
people. It is the time frame to which they are arriving and the integration of those people well, can into society. Can I just society. make a point, going back to what you're saying, I completely mm. agree with you. You're going to end up with a situation where it might actually level out because the people that will be dying on the NHS yes. waiting list will be more yeah. than the people coming in, you know. So maybe there's a method in their madness. Yeah. I have no idea. No, but again, it, it just seems to be one of these arguments, again, that we kind of inherently believe that all immigration is good and we have to stop doing it. It's what I call Schrodinger's immigrant. It's this idea that an immigrant is taking yeah. your job but also it's, sitting on welfare. But they can't be both. We have to have an intelligent it's in conversation it, it, it's, 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 it's in exactly the same narrative that people actually sort of popularise the notion that people come here for £48.92 p a week. I mean, it's, it's absolutely absurd. The reality is... The reality is, with Britain, we've tried cutting benefits, we've tried cutting terms and conditions, we've tried being negative. The reality is, London is effectively the financial capital of the world, and also it has a diaspora from every single country in the world. So if you are somebody who is Guatemalan, as an example, yeah. if you attempt to come to Europe, Really, the only place where you will find other Guatemalans is London, and that's one example, but there are plenty of others. That's the real issue, isn't it? Well, maybe or maybe not. But, I mean, I think that the real uh, issue... That means it, yes. It, it, <laughs> it, I think the, re the real issue is that the, we have this problem with um, uncontrolled uh, uh, flows, inward flows, uh, because uh, we opted out of the Dublin Three arrangement that existed inside the European Union that did actually reasonably control um, in, in, in flows. OK, well, look... Um, well, Vladimir, that was interesting. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> By God, he ruined Tucker Carlson's show yeah. as well, didn't he? God. The first hour, him doing a history lesson. Pretty oh, God, yeah. that was boring. Um, OK, talking of boring, Derek, now the question, <laughs> the question, is, the question is, will you get... I only wish I were. Will, will <laughs> I would have had a much more successful <laughs> career. <laughs> <laughs> will UK, I mean, will UK net migration uh, leave us with seven, a population of 74 million in the next 10 years? Is it true or is it false? It's true. It's absolutely oh. true! Oh. Oh. OK, the British countryside has been branded racist oh. by wildlife charities. Is it true or is it false, Lois? How can the countryside in the United Kingdom, or in England in particular, be colonialist and racist when actually it's not outside of the United Kingdom, but is that it's not a colony, it's here. I think they're mixing up the word countryside with genocide. I really, yeah. really do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, they, what, I mean, what are they let's, talking let's be, about? Let's be honest with you, Farmer Giles is the one that stayed. It was his brothers. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, how they can say it's so, colonialist, so the, I've the, no the, idea. the argument is often made, um, Derek, that... Um, Inevitably, migrants to the UK have fewer assets. You know, a farm is something that is passed down yeah. from generation to generation. They might be profitable, but only because only the just. tens of millions of pounds worth of property was bought by your great, 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 great granddad. Should we care about that? I personally don't. Well, I personally don't. I'm with you on that. We've agreed on something this evening. I'm actually <laughs> cheering. I'm oh, cheering look, up. Pig. <laughs> good, you're cheering well, up. That's good. The, the interesting thing is, I think since we've started doing the show, I think we've had a question on this pretty regularly, actually, and it seems to be something... All right, son, don't no, 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 diss no, 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 the writers. No, 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 but I just, but this, but Are this you is complaining? The point. No, 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 but I think this is the point, is that these people will not let this go. No. And that's the thing I find fascinating, that they are really hammering home this subject. But one thing I find is it, quite... Just, just very quickly, yeah. is this because a lot of these people are Marxists and, and effectively this is about property reappropriation. It's about wealth tax, isn't it? Yeah. But you know Pretty where much. this actually came from? There was but an APPG people... in Parliament... Sorry, just, sorry, sorry. There was sorry. an APPG in Parliament where basically the, the, they were taking uh, contributions and things yeah. and they said that they wanted to find out about the links between um, racism and climate change in the countryside. Yeah. I mean... What? I know. I, Racism I and, him and, him and, and climate change in the countryside. Yeah. I mean, that, well, that, that doesn't get well, 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 I, I mean, think it... neither exists. <laughs> 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 Let's be honest, cows are both black and white. Yeah, so, yeah is... well, absolutely. Uh, in interestingly, the, the, the root of that argument seems to be that just because there aren't a lot of people of colour doing something, it is inherently racist. Yeah. No, but it never seems to work the other way round. No. That if there's something is popular within a particular culture and there's very few white people that do it, we never hear the same argument. And that's that's the bit that really concerns me. I think this is all always, rooted. And I hate the anti-white racism thing. But there's, I think but, there's, but there's always um, 
people, there's always different groups of people gravitating towards different things. We always make yeah, jokes yeah. about the fact that people from the Asian community are, are quite keen on, on small shops yeah, yeah. and having their own businesses. Now, that's just yeah. something I, I, that is cultural yeah. that's within... Thing, you know, but that's yeah, something that's, that's, that's cultural. Yeah. That's well, something that's cultural. Cult I've got a rather good country, uh, countryside story. Suddenly, one of them spotted me and said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he said, a hundred years ago, this lot would have been hunting you. And I said, in 200 years ago, I would have eaten you. <laughs> Do you, know, you know something, you know something, Derek? I've often heard that you've told people that joke and I've always wanted to ask you. I never felt brave enough. Anyway, <laughs> for the purposes of balance, yawn, yawn. Now time for the Woke Wabbit! Yay! All right, Woke Wabbit. OK. So why is the countryside racist? And just be fast. We've already been through this. There's not enough people of colour. And, um, yeah, that's it, really. But what about the fact <laughs> that you're white? Is that a I problem? I don't live in the countryside. I live in... Where do I live? Hampstead. <laughs> <laughs> Hampstead Heath. Hampstead Heath. Uh, the thing I Mayfair. find quite interesting is, well, me and you grew up, Andre, is not that far away from the Lake District. I pretty much used to go through all the kind of summer holidays and Easter breaks. You can't move for Chinese tourists in the Lake District, yeah. particularly on a bank holiday weekend. I mean, the last time I was there, I admit, I'm not a great outdoors. But it doesn't outdoors, necessarily show diversity, but, though. It doesn't it, show but, Chinese but, tourists. But what but I'm saying, what I'm on, What is the Lake District? But no, I just staying. find it interesting. That, by the way, by the way, yeah. where, where I grew up, the only Chinese family owned the local fish yeah. and chips. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember the Hong Kong Chinese all came over and bought chippies? Yeah. yeah. It was kind yeah. of stereotype for a long time. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Is fish yeah. and chips racist, then? Fish and chips is definitely racist. Explain why. Well, it's because it's all it's not diverse enough. Only Chinese people own the fish and chip shop. <laughs> Everyone needs to own No, that's not why it's racist. It's racist because it's the food of the colonial Brits. Anyway, get lost. Actually, okay. Actually. Well, you say everything's a Jewish thing. <laughs> right. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you the truth about what is Jewish. Your grandfather was, and you miss him a lot. Right? Anyway, anyway, oh, anyway. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Anyway, <laughs> okay. okay. It's like that good, goodness gracious me, because it's Indian. Okay. <laughs> so, Lois, uh, is the British countryside being branded racist? Is it true or is it false? I'm just coping with all the emotional impact of what you just said. Um, yeah, it's true, yeah. It's absolutely true! true! That was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. So to Pete. Hello. A BBC executive who called Jewish people Nazi parasites <laughs> and white people a virus has finally been sacked. Now, this question is all about you've got to decide whether the BBC sacked them at all. Is it true or is it well, false? Well, you're going to argue that this question is true, but I actually think the reason this woman got sacked is oh, because... it's a woman. It's a woman, oh, yeah. What? I don't oh, think... They, oh, they, they, they about the, it! it, was, it, it, was, it, was, it was, <laughs> the, the thing for me is the only reason she was fired was because the public found out. Right. I, and that's my great concern with this story. Yeah. I do not believe this woman woke up one morning and thought white people are Nazis. I don't believe that. Right. I think there has to have been a pattern of behaviour where BBC executives looked the other way. I mean, so, her social media, from what we've seen in the papers, was very clearly anti-white and pretty much anti-Jewish. And it concerns me greatly that this woman had such a senior position and only now, after how public... How senior press, was she? I think so, she had something to do with BBC Three. So she, she, kind of so, so she was a news. scheduler at yeah. BBC Three. So I'm no. going to ask the woke wabbit to come in once again and arbitrate <laughs> on this question <laughs> because I will tell you what's down on my, on my form. My form says this question is true. Now, Pete is suggesting that it's false. So let me repeat yeah, the yeah. question again. A BBC executive who called Jewish people Nazi parasites and white people a virus has That's finally been true. sacked. Now, woke wabbit, Pete says it's false because she's been sacked for being caught. We're suggesting she's been sacked for being racist. What do you think it is? I don't think she should have been sacked at all. <laughs> oh! What's the problem here? I mean, you know, it's like... Oh, my God, I, remember, I saw you on the pro Hamas march. <laughs> <laughs> he stood out like a, like a rabbit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He goes at it like a rabbit oh, as well. Oh, well, I don't you. know. That's but why you the population is exploding. On. So okay, okay. Oh, right, I'll here you go. What? I'll, I'll tell you what. So you've got to defend your view then. Go on. What view? What? What? That she got sacked because because the BBC are racist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, she did. Obviously, she said nothing wrong, and <laughs> I view her as a reflection of me within the BBC. So to sack her is also racist against me. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, so in that case, we're going to slightly alter this, Lois. 
Do you think that she actually got sacked as a result of what she'd said and what she'd done, or because the BBC were so embarrassed about having such a racist person on the books, they felt obliged to sack her? I must say, I, I do agree with Pete on this. It, it, it was the fact that she was caught yeah. and the fact that she was so reckless and the fact that she was she was found out. I mean, we all know what well, the BBC hates white people, they hate Jews, they have pro Hamas oh, marches God. outside. I'm scared to talk about Jewish things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's not fit for purpose and, um, and it should be decent. So, Pete, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give. We're going to ask you for the answer. Yeah. So the question was: uh, BBC executive has called uh, Jewish people Nazi parasites, white people a virus, and they've been sacked for being racist. Your answer? Well, I, for what you've got, I say it's true. Well, okay. I think it's false. Well, okay, <laughs> I'll tell you what we're going to do. No, no, you, you can't do. You can't. I'm going no, both ways. No, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to arbitrate. I'll tell you what. Let's get the banker to phone. Come on, banker. Oh, God, you're psychic. Right, OK, come on, banker. Um, uh, deal or no deal? <laughs> deal! Yay! Yay! Ba, 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 ba. You've all won 22 grand, cos that's what happens in every show. <laughs> deal or no deal? OK, get lost. OK, <laughs> so to, to Derek. <laughs> Labour leader Keir Starmer is reportedly considering a bold plan to ban heterosexual marriage. <laughs> is it true or is it false? Well, bold and Keir Starmer <laughs> 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 yeah, not, not ever well. used in the same <laughs> sentence. It's <laughs> the first time I've ever, ever heard it. I have to tell you that probably for the best part of uh, five decades, I've been wondering to myself, what causes heterosexuality? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I think until we know, it should be bad. Yeah. <laughs> I just it's don't want it in my face it's all the time. the one Labour Party policy I can support. <laughs> but how is the ceremony going to go? Well, I they wear this person to this person. I mean, you know, how... No, no, I got into trouble years ago off Five Live when I sang Here Comes the Groom. <laughs> and, and it was 20 years yeah, ago, yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, it went down badly. <laughs> I got. I was, I was actually an intern at the House of Commons and there was a front-page article in the Times, and unbelievably, they phoned me up and they said, what do you think Michael Howard will say about this? Said, <laughs> given think, that, what? That's a bit random, isn't given, it? Given that I'm a, an intern that has comes, I don't think it can... But it was, it was when um, he was... civil partnerships were going through and I Very sang Here Comes the Groom yeah. on Five Live. <laughs> it didn't. That, the, the that's the wedding night. Um, has Keir Starmer considered banning heterosexual marriage? Is it true or is it false? It is... False. It's absolutely false! <laughs> and all of the false questions this week are from the Upper Lip website. That's because I couldn't be bothered writing them myself. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so to Lois, Yay. researchers at the... Uni it's bound to be true, this, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Researchers at the university... True! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> researchers at the University of Liverpool have claimed Anglo-Saxons from 1,500 years ago were transgender. Oh. How do they know? And also, of course, you know, it's definitely going to be true, isn't it? Because it's a northern, a super left-wing university. So, you know, they would want to be discussing this and all their students probably think they're trans or gay or whatever. I don't know. But, I mean, you know... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you're I can say, I'll bring it back to the question, because <laughs> uh, we seem to go way off topic there. But, <laughs> again, but it, I do find this stuff quite interesting because we're starting to see a growing trend of this. Uh, you know, we had it with Ella Galibus the, um, the, a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, we're starting to see this kind of stuff that everything is now trans. That, And I, it just seems to be a deliberate rewriting of history mm. based on a political opinion rather than I mean, on I worried fact. I, and I, I, that concerns me I worried. I worried greatly with this, this whole thing, and we mentioned it before, about Henry VIII's flutist. Yeah. Um, and apparently there was a mention of one of the musicians in his court, and it says, uh, the, the flute player was black. Right. Oh, that's and that, true. Now, now the problem is that is the only reference to this person. But now, many schools are saying, well, twenty percent. Yeah, twenty percent of our our student population are black. Therefore, twenty percent of history yeah. lessons should be yeah. about this person. Yeah, yeah. And we don't even know no. anything, anything about, about them. Don't even know the name. But I think it's, it's one of those classic things with these kind of stories, and it, it, it is where we have to follow the money. Who is paying for this research? I was about to say that. And, yeah, and, and this research. is always... Yeah, who yeah. is paying for this research? And if it's taxpayer money, I'd very much like my money back, please. Yeah. Because this is this is just reckless no, spending. No, 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 Pete, I just think that... You know, actually, Pete, I'm really annoyed with you. The fact that oh, you... Oh, the fact, oh, oh! Yeah, okay. no, it's about no, time. No, <laughs> the, fact, the fact that you have no interest in Scouse, transsexual, <laughs> Anglo-Saxons, <laughs> that is a major worry for me. <laughs>
oh my God, it's a society of Scouse, transsexual, <laughs> Anglo Saxons. They said, butter, 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 la. <laughs> yeah, I don't I, know what that translates as, but I, then again, I can't speak Anglo Saxon. I had to hand in my membership card for that, I'm afraid. Language is not tremendously. You, you, we'd be able to understand. You. Okay, so Lois, yes. have researchers at the Liverpool University of Liverpool, <laughs> la. Oh, calm down, calm yeah, down. Calm down. Have they said that uh, Anglo Saxons were transsexual? Is it true or is it false? Calm down, calm down. True. It's absolutely true, mate. Yeah. True. Yeah. 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 So to Pete, um, a third of Gen Z said they were happier during lockdown. Is it true or is it false? Sadly, it's true. So I just <laughs> want to... <laughs> I want to ask you, have yeah. we surrendered all of our rights in favour of just being obsessed with the nanny state? Perhaps not in this room, no. but in general. Uh, yeah, so like I said, I think there is two aspects to this. I think Gen, Gen Z seem very obsessed with the nanny state, uh, but more importantly, they seem more willing to hand over basic freedoms uh, on the on the kind of get state control and government control. Yeah. And that is the thing that concerns me greatly. Because if you're just willing to hand things over and think the government can fix things, you know, that's a very slippery slope to wander down. You know, some of the most fundamental freedoms that we have and most important freedoms, like, say, for example, freedom of speech. Once you start to kind of hand that over, you, you know, you're looking at the downfall of a civilization. I don't like I to be hyper, but to use hyperbole. It's a bit but... of unpicking picking because, I mean, I think there is a disconnect mm. now, uh, not between... You have lots of connections with young people. There's a disconnect now yeah. uh, between uh, the generations yes. um, and um, less so... Um, uh, class that was always traditionally yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the the great divide. I mean, I have to also say that for me personally, I did enjoy lockdown for many different reasons. Uh, I love not having to see anybody yes, anymore. I, I give you that one. <laughs> I, mean, I loved being in my garden. You know, I love talking to my flowers. Derek, Derek, stop I, talking. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's turned off. <laughs> it's the most, it's the most, no, no, but on a serious note, Derek, it's the most middle class answer I've ever heard. Where people go, I'm not middle class. People, I feel very offended. I'm much more aspirational than that. Where, where, people, uh, where, people go, where people go, and I didn't like na making banana bread in order to save the country. Actually, it was highly, lockdown was highly abusive to young people, in my was, view. You know, yeah. the idea, yeah. Julia Hartley Brewer told me a story. And really? I mean, Julia Hartley Brewer is as tough in real life as she is on the telly mm -hmm. or the radio. Mm -hmm. And she was almost in tears when she discussed that her daughter was turning 13 during lockdown yeah. and would be oh. unable to have that first summer as a teenager yeah. out and about with her friends. And I and I thought Julie was right, it is abusive. But the, is there, abusive. there is one aspect to this though that we really have to talk about and that is the consequences of lockdown. Like we say on young people, the uh, social anxiety is through the roof, mental health problems through the roof. But there is also the economic consequences of, of lockdown. And for me, and I'm gonna be very clear about this, if you campaigned for lockdown, if you wanted a longer lockdown, you are not allowed to complain about the cost of living no. prices. No. You are not allowed to complain about waiting because that is the consequence of your politics. Right. And it is about time that we actually sat these people down and said, You're, you can't have this both ways. Having and they're said, trying to play having it. Having said that, I mean, you know, the cost of the economy of having this trust in Downing Street for oh, 64 days no, there was, was, great, was, was greater than... Oh, uh, I'm not, than, I'd, I'd, than, I'd, oh Derek! No, 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 no. no, that is actually a fact. It's not no. an opinion, so... OK, no, it's not actually okay so, so to Pete, yes. have a third of Gen Z said they were happier during lockdown. Is it true or is it false? It's true. It's oh. absolutely true! <laughs> That was The Woke That Was, continues after the break. Well, this guy wasn't elected in a general election when he first came in as Prime Minister. He's just like Rishi Sunak, but there isn't a war at the moment. So I've been out and about in Westminster asking people if there should be a general election right now. Should there be a general election? Are you a bit annoyed that we've got an unelected Prime Minister? Very, very annoyed. Not happy at all. Which way would you vote if there was an election? The Christian People's Alliance Party, whose rosette I'm wearing and of which I'm a member, and I did stand for them at the local elections in South Hertfordshire. I know um, Christian People's Alliance, they are Christian kind of, but the nation has gone woke. So if you mention Jesus, they call you something else, they call you bigot. Every, anything truth, people don't want the truth, is that they like a lie. They like different narratives. Christian people's alliance are the ones. Should there be a general election? Any time you like, yep. And will Labour win it? By a street. And is it good that, we're having, that we have an unelected government? 
Well, we don't have an unelected government. We have an unelected prime minister, don't we? A successive uh, succession of them. Uh, so that's not good, no. I mean, the big advantage of Rishi Sunak being prime minister is that he won't conspire to bring down the government anymore. No, well, the, the rest of his colleagues will conspire to do that anyway. He doesn't need to. They'll do it for him. Are the Conservatives now just a shambles? They're a complete shambles, and, uh, of course, it's the country that's suffering as a result of it. Uh, good to see you, yeah. No, I'm listen. really following you, Nigel and uh, Richard and all the rest. Listen, and listen, should there be a general going. election? Yes. Uh, why ah, 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 ah. Well, it's a trick question, isn't it? It just feels sometimes that the government isn't listening to us at all. So are you just wasting your time standing here? No, um, I do agree. I think we've got a set of politicians who are answerable only to the elites. They're not listening to us. Frankly, I don't think they care very much about us. Unless I think we do activate ourselves, I think then they'll listen because they don't have control anymore. Why should there be a general election? Because we've got an unelected prime minister. So what would general election do? What, will I, what benefit would it be? Well, it would potentially bring in a, a new set of politicians who might be better. How do you know they might be better? I've, I don't. Well, they may not be better, they may be worse. But... So we're from frying pan to fire. Are you happy with Rishi Sunak as Prime Minister? I um, wish he hadn't pointed to Ella Braverman. I think it was a, an error of judgment. Uh, otherwise, uh, hopefully, compromise will try and get some stable government again. Are the Conservative Party now a joke? Uh, they are a disparate group made up of different strands. I don't see how they can stay together for much longer. Frankly, the political class that we have ended up with don't represent us. They don't act for us. They really, truly act for a, a higher group of elites, is what I think. Um, we've, but the answer, I think you were saying, is there any point of this? I think I've been over that in my mind. I think there is. We've got to activate ourselves, because I think the one thing these elitists don't like or they can't handle is when people like us start going out on the streets. Which way would you vote if there was a general election? Not Tory. <laughs> Anyone but the Tories? Yes. <laughs> what about Nigel Farage? No. What about Keir Starmer? No. What about the Liberal Democrat bloke, whoever it is this week? Let's be on a bit rude to not say his name. He said Nigel Farage, but he doesn't say Liberal Democrat. That's a bit unfair. <laughs> Come on, where's your empire? I can't, I can't remember his name right well, now. It's, it's Sir, Sir somebody Come or other. On, you're the one reporter. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. Right, we're going to cut this. Can't do this anymore. <laughs> I can't remember the Liberal Democrat leader's no, name. No, 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 no. <laughs> I've, been, I've been defeated by a bald man in a backpack who was only here to, uh, to, to show his daughters round Westminster. What a disaster. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. OK, so the next question is to Derek. And I think you're going to find this one very, very difficult. <laughs> Derek Lord was once asked <laughs> by Prime Minister David Cameron to be candidate for Mayor of London. When he declined, it went to a second choice, a man called Boris Johnson. Now, I have to say, I worked in London City Hall at the time for the Conservatives on the London Assembly... I don't think Boris was the second choice, right. was he? Mm. I think he was probably 10th, 11th, 13th. He was low on the list. He was really, really, really low on the list. And you've got to remember to put some context into this, is that at the time that David Cameron and Francis Maud and um, Steve um, Hilton um, asked me to do this, I was better known in the country yes. than Boris Johnson. And um, <clears throat> I didn't give it um, a second. Uh, and, and Derek, let me just ask you this question. So I, the story that I have from when I worked in City Hall was we had polling yeah. where we knew that Ken Livingstone was going to lose. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting point, by the way, for Sadiq Khan. Um, we knew that outer London would outvote inner London. And inner London was incredibly complacent, but yeah. there was just a silent, massive majority in places like Bromley and Romford and places like that that were going to come out. But, um, but David Cameron, Steve Hilton and Francis Maud thought the Conservative candidate would lose. I suspect that you refused to be candidate for Mayor of London because you knew we'd win. That's exactly why yes. I, I refused, because I have no interest in being Mayor of London. I can't imagine anybody with any kind of sanity that would want to be Mayor of London. I'm not in the slightest bit interested in public transport. <laughs> <in the> slightest, <laughs> slightest, I had no idea. I believe you. I, 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 mean, I was just simply not interested in any of these sorts of issues, so I told them I wouldn't be a credible candidate because I had a driver, you know, and so, <laughs> so on and so forth. You know, so the whole thing... No uh, wonder you were upset about being it, called middle class. <laughs> 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 so, uh, sorry, go on. Yes, Karen. I was just going to say, so first of all, it's all your fault that we're in this situation yeah, right now. I think that's probably right. So, <laughs> so, 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 Derek, so, Derek, um, 
Derek, were you asked to be the Conservative candidate for Mayor of London? By the way, I will tell you something on the polling that we had, that Boris Johnson was a drag on the ticket and you would have won by a mile. So is it true that you turned down the job? Not once, not twice, but three times. It's hey! absolutely true! <laughs> and now for the scores from the Woke Wabbit! <laughs> so, OK, Woke Wabbit, do you think Sadiq Khan's doing a good job? I think he's doing a fine job. He's raised a load of money for, for TfL. He's cleaned up the air. And, um, uh, yeah, he's not, stopped... Not the air around him. And not, <laughs> and not on the tube. <laughs> so, so, do you think that 20-mile-an-hour zones actually make... At the air cleaner. I don't think he's gone far. It should be 10 miles an hour. OK, well, what are the scores then? Oh. Won't grab it. Um, I don't know. Scores are for <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> 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 oh, right, right. Do, do it again. Get out. Get out. Get out. Do it again. Right. I mean, do you know something? He's meant to be one of the rising stars of our production. So now, what are the scores? Won't grab it. <laughs> so what's the scores? Won't grab it. And come up with an answer, you useless <laughs> piece of... Scores are for capitalists. I don't do that. Sort of thing <laughs> I'll get on with it. OK, on. Lois is winning. Yay! Yay! Is that because you emotionally traumatised me with the granddad comment earlier? No, it's because we're meant to be paying that, that useless, <laughs> useless thing. OK, right, I'll tell you what, we're going to go through these questions quite quickly in this round. It's the ready money round. Woo! So we've got Andre Roy Walker here. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Interesting. Lois, <Interesting. laughs> say what you say. <laughs> <laughs> It's good, it's, but, good, but it's, right. it's good, but it's not it's right. It's good, but it's not right. It's good, but it's not the one. Lois, you're back in play. OK, Lois, <laughs> the Conservative Party are planning to tackle cross-channel migration by putting up billboards in Calais with pictures of Birmingham. Is it true or is it false? Um, oh, my God. Yeah, that uh, that would be a good deterrent, wouldn't it? Picture. Having been to the Tory party conference there... and every... Oh, no, I'm going to get I think in trouble now. I think, a, trouble I think now. a picture of Michael Fabricant would do a bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> why, 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 did, uh, why did thought of the uh, Mayor of the West Midlands remind you of Michael Fabricant? <laughs> <laughs> OK, nobody's going to get that joke. <laughs> <I know. laughs> no one's brave enough to comment on it. <laughs> OK, so is it true or is it false that there's going to be billboards of Birmingham? I think it's false, and I think it's one of those ones from the upper lip, is it? It's absolutely false! <laughs> so, Pete, Hello. Douglas Murray's live stage show was cancelled by a London theatre two hours mm -hmm. before it was due to start. 800 people had bought tickets to raise money for Israel. Now, I love Douglas Murray, but I will say that when he presented the show and there were incoming missiles, <laughs> and he responded by going... <laughs> I think, I think, look, I'm not being funny. A million pound cruise missile, if you duck it. Uh, only, it's not ta only Tonians don't do coordination. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. So, how are but, we um, going to cope in Israel then, Andre, with the cruise missiles? Don't today? tell them we're going right. to Gaza. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus, that's right. a schoolgirl error. Uh, no, okay. on, a serious, on, a, on, a, on a serious note, Pete, yeah. on cancellation, yeah. they're, they're not stopping, are they? No, uh, but the thing that these people really need to learn is the thing called the Streisand effect. That when oh, you try yes. to shut something down, it suddenly becomes more popular, because oh, right. I yes. didn't know this yes. event was happening, and now it was in every national newspaper. So it doesn't really work in the way that it does. But let's be brutally clear about what happened. Following death threats at a free speech event yes, it's on defending Israel, that they had to cancel it because of these threats. No, well, Let's be perfectly clear on John's what happened. John's with synagogues. Well. Yeah, and they did have to move to a synagogue, and I, yeah. I take my hat off to the synagogue for being brave enough yeah. to do it. Mm -hmm. It was the Apollo Theatre here in London, and I, I understand why they cancelled it, because of security and safety. But let's be clear, these people decided to use threats of violence mm -hmm. to shut an event down. As far as place? I'm concerned, it is an act of domestic well, terrorism. Well, well, OK, let, let me ask you this, Lois, because I think this is relevant just very quickly. Mm. It's on the Mike Freer... Uh, resignation as well. He stood down as member of parliament of Finchley yeah. and Gold's Green. Right. This is another example of Islamists making threats of violence and it's shutting down our democratic system. I'm very worried about this. Douglas Murray and now... I'm sorry, Mike Freer and then Douglas Murray. You know, I absolutely agree with you. And we we've talked about this a lot of times. You know, the, the Jewish people are the canary in the cage. It's them, then it's us next. You worked for Margaret Thatcher and John Major. Well, some people said that she worked for me. Oh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Well, you did better out of it, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 she, but she was a controversial character and obviously lived under the threat of terrorism, not Islamist terrorism, Irish terrorism. I worry very, very greatly. I look at what happened with Conservative Party conference, blown up at 4am. She started the conference on time at 9 with a speech against terrorism. That's not happening this time, is it? 
No, it's not. And that does take me back in time. And actually, there, here is a moment to be very, very serious. Uh, because um, it was yesterday that I spoke to Norman Tebbit on the telephone. Mm. Um, but... Um, Derek, is there a point to this? I knew you had a point. Don't worry, I'm used to hanging out with men that lose their trainers talk because all my boyfriends are over 60. <laughs> it's Norman Tebbit! Hey! He says, that Derek Lord, he's useless. He <laughs> never remembers any bike. conversations that I've ever had with him. All right, <laughs> okay, so just let's, get, let's just get just the answer, what come was, on. Uh, what, was, what was the bloody quiz? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's fine anyway. <laughs> it's, has Douglas Murray been forced to cancel the event and has Derek forgotten whether it's oh, true yes. or is it false? <laughs> yes, it's true. It's absolutely hey! true! <laughs> OK, Derek, compose yourself. <laughs> Just Stop Oil is selling pictures of old naked men to raise money. <laughs> I took them. Why on <laughs> earth would anybody... <laughs> why on earth would anybody want to buy a picture of an old man when you... My get, wife. ..when you can get them from... What wife? ..when you can get them free from any Tory MP? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly. Have you, ever, have you ever been sexted by a Tory MP? Yeah. Well, that's my, yes. my, 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 my private life remains private. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come oh, on, God. Derek. We all know who it was. I don't think text messages. What do you mean, only one? Text oh, text oh. <laughs> the last time Derek had an affair with the Tory MP, text messages did not that's be invented. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think mobile phones exist. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. What he had to do was he had to do the old dial. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> I'll describe it to you. Yeah, I've Actually, forget. what's wrong with having pictures of attractive old men? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But all you did was stun the, the room with silence, <laughs> in that room, didn't you? Okay, Derek. Has just stopped because I don't want to get in. Because the problem is we're going to just have to edit this. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So has. Uh, Just Stop Oil started selling uh, pictures of old naked men to raise money. Is it true or is it false? It's unbelievably true! It's absolutely oh. true! <laughs> so, the next question is to Lois. Yes. 40 illegal immigrants on the Bibby Stockholm have converted to Christianity to avoid deportation. Is that true or is it false? Now, Lois, I have to say one thing. There's lots of people who claim asylum for being gay and lots of people who claim asylum for being Christian. I'm amazed that most gay Christians in the world are from Syria. No, <laughs> wouldn't, no. You wouldn't, wouldn't have expected that, would you, Lois? You would, no, who, who would have thunk it? Oh, my God. I, do you know what? I'm, I'm a high church of England. I'm, I'm high up the candle, as they say. So Anglo-Catholic, so all the pomp without the Pope. You've got the Pope. But, you know, <laughs> I... Um, I can't believe that my church, well, I can believe it, is complicit in this absolute nonsense. Why on earth are they taking such a highly political view? And why are they not, you know, worried about their congregations and the size of the congregations rather than converting? It's such a no, load because, of because, rubbish. Because, well, Derek, Derek let, me we... ask, let me ask you about the Church of England just very quickly, because what I see, look, the Catholic Church is effectively a franchise, right? What happens is you get given your territory, a percentage of what you raise goes to, to the local bishop and a percentage goes to country, the cardinal or whatever. But of course, with the Church of England, these positions are paid. So it doesn't matter whether you have a large or a small congregation. And if you were, and I don't want to be critical of anyone in particular, a former oil trader with <laughs> made a few million, but, uh, but now wants a new career shining up your woke credentials, yeah. then being Archbishop of Canterbury, sorry, Justin, but, but <laughs> hypothetically would be a great job. Yes, it would be. And I think probably the idea that they should actually convert to Christianity came from Justin Welby. That's probably right. In, yeah, in, in the first place. And we should really hold him um, yeah. uh, to account for it. It's, it's, it's an absolute yeah. disgrace. Let's, let's be brutally honest here. It's, the Church of England was running a conveyor belt. It was running it was a conveyor belt. belt. And I, I, why do you say that, Pete? Because, because the, uh, I do not understand why we still put so much emphasis on the respectability of the Church of England. Yes. You know, like priests, uh, vicars and things can sign for your passports and stuff like that. Oh, I, no, I don't no, understand. Don't say but, that. No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, but one, just one <laughs> yeah, second. Exactly. But one thing that re I find staggering... You've had is, a second. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> is, I'm sorry, the Church of England is allowed to have an opinion when it ponies up some tax. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I am sick to the back teeth of getting a lecture from a person who thinks he needs a private library worth 24 million whilst lecturing me on how terrible a person I am because I don't think we should have 
have uncontrolled immigration. I, agree I think with I am sick to the back teeth. But, of it. but also, none of these people are ever held accountable yeah. for the no. things that they do in our name, yeah. particularly when they are in public service. You know, an, a, an analogy uh, that I have um, is the governor of the Bank of England. Yes, 100 oh, percent. You know, why are these people never sacked yes. anymore? No, no, look, 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 look. <laughs> Lois, is, Lois is getting a bit annoyed about this, but, but Lois, let me just say, I think what Peter said is not against the Christian faith. No. It's against the behaviour of the bishops of the Church of England. Absolutely. Those yeah. are two different things. Absolutely. And when you... It's when unethical. You specific, sorry, when you specifically talk about priests being able to say, uh, sign passports, I do see why they're so respected in the community. I mean, my, I don't think, you know, it's saying too much to say that, that when I've gone through a very difficult time in my life, my, my priest... Mm. Um, Saved my life. So yeah. I, I think every individual priest and stuff like that, I, they, I, I, I respect them enormously for the work that yeah, they don't, do. Don't get me wrong. I don't like to paint oh, yes. everybody with the same brush, but at some point, we start. To, we have to have this conversation about the influence of the Church of England, considering that we're not really supposed to have that much influence. It is staggering to me because, that this has happened. Because let's be brutally honest. What then? What the Church of England have been doing for a long time and, and being allowed to get away with for a long time is they a peddling socialism. Yes. Yeah. OK, so, Lois, yes. um, have 40 <laughs> illegal immigrants on the Bibby Stockholm amazingly worked out that they want to be Christian. Is it true or is it false? Very, very sadly, it's completely true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> so the last question is to Derek. Pete Barnes is celebrating his 43rd <laughs> birthday today. Is it true or is it false? 44. 43 today. 44. 43 today. <laughs> He's got the key to the door. Never been 43 before. <laughs> I hate the show. Right, Barnes. Take it away. Uh, oh. Oh. It's not lit. It's not lit. It's not lit because there were health and safety issues. Now look, Pete, what you've got to do. This is this is the one we use for the fox pops. So what you do is oh. right, we'll just have, get your spoon. Get your spoon in it. I don't even get a full cake. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no! Do not do that to me on my birthday. Just in the mouth. In the mouth. Oh, my well, God! Oh, my God! That was, that was the one that was. Thank you so much. To, thank you so much to Derek Lord. Thank you so much to Pete Bond. Thank you so much to Lois Berry. And we're off to the pub to celebrate Pete's birthday. <laughs>